Orovetti have been around as an IEM brand since 2015, but this is the first time I've ever tried any of their IEMs. Like most brands, they've got their own unique technologies. In their case, it's a special venting system for dynamic drivers. But as is always the case, the proof is in the listening when it comes to an IEM. And so I've got a series of three videos coming up for you, looking at the Orovetti range, starting with the OD100, then moving to the OD200, and then onto the OH700VB. I'm going to introduce those IEMs to you now in brief, and then move through and talk about some comparisons between the OD100 and some competitors, and then the OD100 versus the OD200, before I then move on to a new video for the OD200, and then another new video for the OH700VB. And so if you've arrived at one of the later videos, and you want to see the earlier ones, check the links down in the description below to go back to the beginning of this series. But you don't have to watch them in order, you can just go to the ones that you want to. It also means that if you've already seen one of these Orovetti IEM reviews on my channel, then you can skip past this next bit using the chapter markers down below in the timeline and jump forward to the part that becomes unique because I'm gonna repeat this next bit in all three of these videos. And that's the introduction of the three IEMs. Coming in at the bottom of the roundup that I have here is the OD100 from Orovetti. As you can see here, they're a very small, compact little metal shelled IEM. They're a single dynamic driver unit and they retail for just 70 US dollars. The single dynamic driver in each of these shells has an impedance of 16 ohms and a sensitivity of 105 decibels per milliwatt, making them very easy to drive. If we then look at the next model in the range, that takes us to the OD200. And again, it's just a single dynamic driver unit. It's also in a metallic shell, but this time it's a much more sculpted shell and a very, very nicely made, very comfortable and well-designed shell. The OD200 here jumps up to 199 US dollars, so it's a very significant jump up from the OD100, and there's probably a few reasons for that. One of them is that you've now got a beryllium coated dynamic driver in here, beryllium being an excellent material for making drivers out of, because it's a bit self damping, it's also very strong but very light, and so it should make for a more precise, less resonant driver. And then on top of that, you've also got the dedicated airflow distribution system that Orovetti have patented, that's known as DAD for short. And that's meant to manage the airflow and the pressure on both the front and back side of the driver to allow the dynamic drivers to operate at their optimum level. In addition to that, we've got tuning nozzles. So this one comes with two different tunings. I'll talk about those in the review of the ID200. And you're also getting swappable terminations between 4.4 mil, 3.5 mil, and I think there was 2.5 mil in the packet, definitely 3.5 and 4.4. Specifications on the OD200 are very similar to the OD100 in the sense that you've again got a 16 ohm earphone with sensitivity this time a little bit higher at 108 decibels per milliwatt. And that then brings us to the final IEM in the Orovetti lineup, or at least in the range that I've got here, and that's the OH700VB. Now you might notice the change in naming convention here. We've gone from OD to OH, and that's because now we've gone from D being dynamic driver in the last two to H being a hybrid design in the 700. The OH700VB comes in at 699 US dollars. And as I said, you're getting a multi-driver design here in a beautifully molded acrylic housing. And so specifically what's going on is we've got six balanced armatures and one dynamic driver per shell. We've again got tuning options, much like in the OD200, but this time instead of being a nozzle-based tuning system, we've moved to a switch-based tuning system on the front, sort of bottom point of the IEM shell, the bit that sits right down low near your earlobe. We've again got swappable plugs at the amplifier end of things, and some slightly different specifications due to the hybrid design of these. And so these come in with an impedance of just 12 ohms, and sensitivity that's even higher now at 112 decibels per milliwatt. So all three of these models are very easy to drive. You're not gonna have problems driving them from a dongle, a smartphone, a laptop, whatever you want to. And we'll talk shortly about what the level of quality is, and whether or not it's worth running them with higher end gear. Before we get there though, it is worth me mentioning that all three of these IEMs come with a good set of accessories, and they're also generally very comfortable as well. But I say generally because the design of the OD100 here is a little bit challenging just for me. This is not gonna be an issue for everybody, but for me, the specific angle of the nozzle, the length of the nozzle, means that when I put it in my ear, the right side ear tip sometimes actually bumps up against the first bend of the ear canal, and that can actually seal off the sound from coming out of that IEM. So it sounds like there's nothing at all coming out of the right channel, but if I wiggle it around, it breaks that seal and the sound can get through. So do be aware, I think the shape and length and angle of the nozzle from the OD100 may not be great for everybody, but the good news is the OD200 and the OH700VB have no such problems. So hopefully they'll be comfortable for you. If you've tried any of these three, do let us know in the comments down below how you went with them.
The other couple of general things I should mention is that they all come with a very nice set of tips. Nothing revolutionary or out of the ordinary, but a good solid range. You've got a combination of some simple soft black tips, and then also some white and black silicon tips where the internal core is a little bit harder, a little bit stiffer, and that can be really good for some people. So you've got a nice range of choices. I do still prefer some of the aftermarket options out there, but you can definitely buy these and expect to use them without having to go out and get aftermarket tips. And now one very final thing to mention about the design is that the OH700VB, talking about tips and nozzles and stuff like that, the OH700VB does have a slightly wider nozzle than some other models. And I mean some other models in the general world of IEMs. It's not a massively thick nozzle on the OH700VB, and I have no problems with it. It uses the same ear tips as all these models. But for those of you with very narrow ear canals, it might cause some problems by the time you take the nozzle plus a tip. It could get just a little bit thick for those with very small ear canals. But I think for most people, you're not going to have any fit and comfort issues with any of these three. And so let's dive in to talk about how they actually sound. So in this video, we're just going to focus on the OD100. And then in the next two videos, we'll go to the OD200 and then the OH700VB. For all of my listening notes across all three of these videos, all of my listening was done with the Chord Poly and Mojo 2. And kicking off with the OD100, what I would describe was a sound that was punchy with a very clear, crisp top end. To my ears, there's a bit of extra emphasis in the 2 to 3 kilohertz range, and that does throw off the sense of naturality from the OD100s for me. Now this is where things get pretty tricky with IEMs because we're all a little bit different. And I've just started playing around, more than playing around, I've just transferred and remade all measurements so they work over on a SquigLink site. So for those of you using SquigLink, you can now access all of my IEM measurements or almost all of them over there. And I want to say a huge thanks to Mark from Super Reviews and also Listener who's a contributor to his own SquigLink and also an active member of the Super Reviews Discord server. I want to say a huge thanks to both of them for A, getting me set up on SquigLink, and also Listener for helping to set up the compensation curves to make my SquigLink site a 5128 compatible one. Now what that means without going into too much detail is that you can compare my measurements with measurements on other sites, other SquigLinks with that 5128 certification and know that you're going to get fairly comparable graphs with things like Crinical's 711 measurements and also Crinical's new 5128 and the Headphones.com 5128 IEM measurements. But I'm not going to go into any more depth about that here. I might do a separate video later if some of you want it. The main thing is I wanted to say a huge thanks to Mark from Super Reviews and also Listener. Your help has been invaluable. And so back to the OD100. As I said, there's a bit of emphasis for my ears at least, where I feel like it's getting just a little bit too hot in the 2 to 3 kilohertz range. And where that really plays out is on things like male vocals. It just tilts the tonality of male vocals a little bit too high into the treble. And that can make them sound a little bit uneven, lacking in some body and some weight. While we're speaking about top end, the OD100 does lack a little bit of refinement up there as well. I find it a little bit grainy, sometimes a little bit too aggressive in the top end, not so much in terms of the amount of treble, so much as just the quality of that treble. And we need to keep in mind here that this is a 70 US dollar IEM, I'm not expecting it to be a top tier performer. But this is one of the trade-offs you get when you're buying budget IEMs. They're not going to have necessarily the best refinement of the sound, but the tonality from the OD100 is generally pretty good. The final thing to think about is staging from this one. And I would say that the staging is okay for the price. It's a fairly natural staging IEM. It doesn't give you a lot of depth or layering in the sound stage, but it's about what I expect from a 70 US dollar unit. And so in isolation, I would say that the OD100 is solid. It's not blowing me away, but it certainly sounds good. And so the question for me always becomes, how does it compare to the competition? And looking through what I had here, one of the IEMs that I've got coming up for review happens to be the Kiwi is Forteza. The Forteza is a 59 US dollar IEM, so $11 cheaper than the OD100, and I was curious to see how these compared. I listened to a handful of tracks on both of these, but the one that I chose to make my notes on was The Age of Worry by John Mayer. And this is a great example of where the OD100's emphasis in that sort of upper mid-range treble area just pushes it a little bit into the unnatural territory for me. John Mayer's vocal doesn't sound as natural and true to life as I think it should sound. And what I mean by that is I don't know exactly how it sounded, I don't know exactly how it was mixed, but what I hear from the OD100 doesn't strike me as entirely natural. Interestingly, as I moved over to the Forteza, it was actually tilted even more into the upper mids and the treble and yet it sounded more natural to me. So even though it's got less of the mid-range and upper bass, that being the lower mid-range and upper bass, because all of the transitions between different frequency bands are quite gradual, nothing kind of jumps out as being unnatural or jarring to the ears. 
And so overall, when I stop to think about the tonality, it is leaning more to the upper registers, but doing it in a more natural way. Having said that, the lack of upper bass and mid-range compared to something like the OD100 means that I want to keep turning up the sound with the Forteza to get that sense of body, weight, and presence, and that leads them to become more fatiguing because of the upper registers. And so for me, I do find them a less enjoyable listen in the long term, that being the Fortezas, because I can't get the volume I want for the presence that I want without also getting fatigue in the top end. Not that the Fortezas are a particularly fatiguing IEM, just that the balance of frequencies means that I want to turn them up more. On the other hand, the OD100, even at the correct listening levels for me, they can get a little bit shouty because of that 2 to 3 kilohertz range. And so both of these IEMs have their issues, neither is perfect, and I think ultimately it's going to come down to preference which way people go on this one. It's probably worth mentioning here that in terms of staging, the Forteza isn't vastly better or different than the OD100, they are slightly different. And I do think the Forteza produces a slightly more spherical sense of staging, albeit still a pretty intimate one. So it's slightly less lateral left and right, a little tiny bit of depth there, but I don't think it's a reason to separate these two. I don't think the Forteza is far enough ahead on staging that I would choose it over the OD100 for that factor alone. And so instead what I would say is that if you tend to like a leaner sound, a slightly more neutral sound depending on how you define neutral, then probably the Forteza is the better choice. But if you do like a bit of bass presence, a little bit of punch, and a little bit of thump, then I think the OD100 is probably the better choice of these two. And one of the cool things about me being set up on Squiglink is that you can go to the Squiglink site, I'll link it down below, and compare all the different IEMs I'm talking about for yourself. You can look at different target curves. I'm working on one there that I'm developing as my personal preference target curve. It's not finished yet, it's still a work in progress. But you can look at different target curves, different preference curves, you can compare different IEMs and see which you might like the most. So check that out for yourself. For now I'm going to say that the OD100 and the Forteza are both solid with reasons that you would choose one over the other, but neither being clearly better or worse. And so that then leads us to the next question, and also kind of the introduction to the next video in this series, and that's to find out if it's worth spending the extra 130 odd US dollars to jump all the way from the OD100 up to the OD200. Putting these two up against each other and using the black tuning nozzles on the OD200, there's an immediate increase in detail, resolution, and nuance from the sound in the OD200. Now whether it's a big enough jump that it's worth 130 US dollars, which is a big leap, that's a whole other question, but it's definitely an improvement. I do also think that the OD200 with those black tuning nozzles is balancing the tonality a little bit more naturally and a little bit better. And so my initial thoughts are that the OD200 is clearly the better IEM, and so make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you want to know more, because that one's coming out tomorrow. For now I'm going to say that the OD100 is a solid choice at 70 US dollars, it's beautifully made, the accessories are solid, the tuning is quite good, it's fun, it's enjoyable, it's punchy, it's got good clarity and resolution, but you are getting a budget IEM with some of the trade-offs that come with that. And so if that sounds like your cup of tea, I'll put some links down below where you can go and pick these up for yourself. And for now, as always, I hope you found the video useful, helpful, and informative. And if you have, please hit the like button, and do subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, I'll leave it to the music, so happy listening, be kind to each other, I hope to see you here tomorrow for the OD200 review, and so I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm.